What's going on guys? I hope this message finds everybody well. Throughout this YouTube channel, what I said I'll discuss is all the high performance habits that I do for myself personally, as well as what we do at the Stay Strong Collective. And over the next four videos, what I'm gonna be going over are the four key elements that I think are imperative for you to improve and have success. Number one is your mindset, two, your body, three, you, 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 what happens within your business as an entrepreneur, a coach, or a leader, and lastly, are your leadership skills. On today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to derive an elite mindset and where I sort of found my high performance edge when it came to me being an athlete and now operating a business as well as working with high performing individuals. The thing about mindsets and, and emotions and things that are in that gray context, the problem is, is they're not actually, there's not very many points of success that are actually pinpoints you can tick off. Whether you're talking about metrics for physical performance or you're looking for KPI as a business, the problem with mindsets, emotions, feelings, it all comes down to sort of in the now and the situations that you're in. Now, for me, something that I pride myself on as an athlete and as a businessman, as, as, as a husband too, is actually being resilient. And being resilient doesn't necessarily mean actually being resilient to the point of I'm gonna suffer. Resilient means is I actually have unwavering standards for myself. I have the ability to maintain my integrity, integrity across my values, and more so the point of I have the ability to say no. Now, as a high performance individual, somebody is expected to sort of grow, elevate themselves, become more, do more. The, the first battle you need to win comes between your ears. If you can understand who you are, what you do, what you stand for, what you're willing to fight for, and what you're unwilling to tolerate, those five things are actually going to help you propel you forward. Where this actually stemmed from is a very, from a very early age of, of my parents, really, um, my dad, coming from Stoke-on-Trent, he's from a mining family, came from nothing, moved to London with 50 quid. My mum came from a farm and she moved from Oxfordshire and moved to London. I've always been in an environment where my parents have been growth mindset driven. Why not mentality? I, I mean, my dad was a, was a creative, um, somebody who I very much looked up to, but he, he never conformed to, to normal processes within business. He always used to say creativity over process. And something that I learned from a very young age was why the fuck not? Um, and I think too many people are getting stuck and polarized by looking at other people's journeys and not actually becoming more self-aware around themselves. So ever since I was a youngster, it's been drilled into me from a young age. My dad used to give me a saying, which was be daring, be different, be decisive. And what I usually do, what I did across me playing professional sport, what I've done with working with professional athletes through to professional executives, to even just with a mum with three kids or somebody who's just struggling and needs a little bit of a helpful information to get themselves moving and taking action, I've always used that saying, being daring to give yourself the courage to start something new, be different, not just conforming to this to the mediocre or the norm, and being decisive, stand by what you're actually going to do, be, be decisive on your actions and the sort of mannerisms that you're gonna exhibit, that's gonna allow you to have the sort of the time and space to develop. Now. If we put a foot on a ball a second, a lot of people who are watching this will understand the difference or would have heard of either having a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. A fixed mindset is basically somebody that always looks in, which is why me now, everything's crumbling around me, I can't change, the, the, the processes are set in stone and I can't move. And the way that you change from, from, change from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset is just adding one word and adding yet. I haven't achieved that yet. I haven't got to that position yet. I haven't earned that much money yet. I haven't competed at this or, or won this trophy yet. The minute you put a yet on the end of that sentence, you open, you, you reopen that open looped question of why, when is it possible? And I, I emphasize the moment when it's impossible, not if it's impossible. We've seen it throughout the huge amount of industries of high performance. I'm currently, me personally, I'm going down the rabbit hole of understanding flow and peak performance and understanding the difference between peak performance and ultimate performance. Peak performance basically is optimal performance, so health, my health, your health to be the, 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 the highest it can be. And uh, ultimate performance is actually where your life's in jeopardy. When you look at the people that are, that are competing on the world stages of, of, of taking on huge challenges, and this has stemmed from a, um, Stephen Kotler did a study around surfing where 40 years ago, they were only just surfing on 50 foot waves. Now they're looking, they're, they're regularly hitting bigger waves and doing more tricks, etc. The point is that we're adaptive. And if you're sat there thinking that you're in, in a place where you can't achieve what you want to achieve, the first thing to do is actually look at why you believe those things. I'm by no means a 
a gifted person in any physical or emotional or intelligent level. I've, I've always had a chip on my shoulder for why couldn't I be good enough? And the way that I actually succeeded that and learned that was doing it the hard way. The reason I played professional rugby because I was extremely stubborn and in some regards extremely stupid, a very emotional and aggressive person. And it only got me so far um, until I had a major knee injury, which made me recalibrate everything I thought around myself and how I actually work and operate. As I finished sport and as, as I got more into business and I got more into helping others achieve bigger things within their mind, body, business and their leadership skills of leading teams or creating culture... I soon realized that the whole point is not to be um, competing against other people. If you compete against yourself, suddenly you're looking to accomplish self-mastery. And self-mastery is a very, very hard topic to you to find an end point on because once you accomplish something, you want more. Self-development is one of the best things I've ever had in my life from an emotional and a mindset standpoint. But it can also be the most polarizing. Too many people are sat there reading self-help books and not taking action on them, highlighting every fucking quote possible and what they're not putting, they're doing is not doing the actual do. They're not putting those things into action. They're not actually taking those those action steps and plugging them into their their film, which the film is your life, not a literal film. What they're doing is they're 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 searching for the one little piece of knowledge that's going to unlock the the magic puzzle. It's absolutely impossible. So when it comes down to developing a high performance mindset, or developing somebody who's resilient, or developing someone who can lead from the front and continually without losing their shit. The key thing to distinguish is what's the end in mind? What's the definition of done? What are we actually trying to achieve? But a a true high performer, a true person who has the ability to to lead huge companies comes down from being more self-aware. Too many people rely on confidence to have the ability to take action. The problem with confidence is it can be broken. And if you break somebody's confidence, usually everything else subsides. Their actions, their behaviors all go downhill. If you become more self-aware though, you have the ability to be resilient because you take away the stress response of being wrong or being scared or whatever and you ch- you change it to a challenge response. And a challenge response is actually is a yin and a yang. You have the ability to understand what can go wrong, but you also have the ability to take action on the things that can help that thing go right. And I think a lot of the time what people do as a coach, as a leader, as somebody who's, an, who's athletic or chasing something big is what they don't do is they don't put their foot on the ball and realize how far they've come or acknowledge that what they're trying to do is seriously fucking hard. And if it's seriously fucking hard, it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be easy. If you're trying to change from a, from a behavior standpoint, it's also going to be extremely difficult. So what I'd like you to do are these three things. And three things that I learned massively through uh, NLP and my, my years of coaching are currently the emotions that you have, are they real? Or are they actually a frame in which you're putting them in in your situation? Number two, what are you going to do about them? Rather than sitting there feeling overwhelmed, burnt out, pissed off, not happy, etc., what's your next action step to actually shake shake that that part of of your journey to help you take action towards whatever you're trying to achieve? And lastly, one thing that I've learned is why it's so serious. I think too many people that are chasing high performance or too many coaches that want to be better, do better, earn more money, etc., athletes trying to achieve the inevitable, like, achieve greatness. They don't actually enjoy what they're doing. They, they're too busy finding the peak of whatever summit they're trying to climb and then searching for the next one rather than realizing that you're actually forged from the journey rather than the outcome, which is a very cliche thing to say. But until you've been in the position and you've achieved the things that you've asked for, it's impossible for you to actually see the wood from the trees and be able to distinguish that fact. So I hope that's helpful. Next one we're going to go over is how I develop my, myself from a high performance standpoint when it comes across my body as an athlete. And I hope that was helpful. I'll catch you guys soon.